Hey everybody, hope you're all well. Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench or Nigel's Mustang Channel, whichever one you seem to be watching this on. So um, here we are, we have a Mustang t-shirt on, like for quite an old one actually, this one's a bit more, one of my more tatty ones. Um, we've got a big box of Mustang parts just arrived, so it must be Mustang Monday. So let's get on and uh, get looking at this. In part one, we did the front bumper, which was part one of the build. Uh, the part one magazine so we've got this huge front bumper we fitted the indicators in you can see here fitted those in and the front number plate registration plate which you may decide to leave off because in most states in america of course they don't have a front registration plate and then we also built up this massive one six scale metal wheel with rubber tire beautiful tread on there solid plastic insert doesn't so it doesn't go all saggy and flat but uh, really, really nice center cap. They asked us to leave out the center cap actually has a magnet on the back of it. So when it goes in, when there's a screw in there holding that wheel on, it will go on a magnet and be able to come off so you can have the wheels on and off a ball. Um, what I've done, I've wrapped a tiny bit of masking tape around there just to take up the slack so it stays in there like that and it won't fall out. So I've got that there for safekeeping rather than, you know, put it in a jar and it gets scratched or whatever. So we've got that. So that was parts one and two. So now in this box, we've got parts three, four and five. So not sure how much work there's going to be in here. So it might be a two part video. We might just make it a one part. I think going forward from here, we're going to be getting five parts in each package. So we may start splitting it over two weeks or something. So we shall see. So let's get on the camera looking down on the bench like we normally do. And we'll see what we've got in here. We'll have a look through the magazines and we'll go from there. All right, so here we are at the bench, and I just want to start off with a couple of tips. And I'd like to say these tips are my tips. They are not tips from Diagostini. I haven't read them in the magazine. Diagostini haven't told me to say this. This is totally my idea. Um, so if it goes wrong, it's my fault, not theirs. But basically, the, the bumper comes in this lovely plastic packing. So to keep it scratch free and, and you know stop it getting all um, knocked about and everything, I would suggest putting it back in the plastic packaging that it came in. Okay, your wheel is going to be fine. I mean, you're not going to damage black rubber and nothing else. Even even if you put it that way, it's still all touching the uh, the rubber. And then the, the spare screws. I've got a little old Tamiya paint jar here with the spare screws. I don't think we're going to need them. Apparently, they put extras in just in case. It's better to have one too many than not enough, and then have to spend the shipping just to send you a, a, a screw. Um, the other thing everybody's saying is to replace the screwdriver. I agree. Um, the screwdriver that comes with it is adequate for the smaller screws and everything, like in here. But the trouble is, I've got a lovely screwdriver here, which will fit in there beautifully, but this enables me to go much tighter. So if you are going to use a different screwdriver, be very careful. You can see by the grip and the leverage I've got on this compared to that, it's it's massive. So, you know, maybe use this when you're going into plastic, use this when you're going into metal. Um, the other thing to consider, I have heard people say, when you go into metal, you can go as tight as you like. And this is metal onto metal. And yeah, you're probably with a screwdriver not going to damage anything. You know, even if you're even if you're Superman, but when it comes to fitting bits like these plastic fittings in here, these are chrome plated plastic, and yes, you're going into metal, and you could probably do that screw up as tight as you like, but you're going to split the plastic open because it's trying to force it open. So be very careful there. Just just you know, go until they stop, and then just a little nip at the end, just to just to hold it in place. It doesn't need to be raunch down or anything same with your license plate again they're countersunk so they're gonna have even more likelihood to split things open so just be careful and don't go over tightening things it's better to have a little bit loose than a bit too tight and then my final tip for um for keeping everything nice why wouldn't that go down properly the bumper's in there properly that won't go down properly for some reason i don't know why never mind so my final tip is the box that your parts one and two came in is slightly larger than the box for three, four and five. So I would suggest keep all your paperwork and everything in the bottom of there until you get your free binder and keep your, your wheel and everything in there and your little screws. And there we go. And I've also got something else I would deeply recommend. I've got a, um, a microfiber towel here that I can fold in half and put parts on. So I don't scratch them like when I was working on the bumper 
so you can put the bumper down face down put the screws in from the back you know you're not going to scratch the paint you know when it comes to doing the body work and you've got to put the body on its roof you know we'll probably have to get probably have to get a blanket or something for a king size bed for that but uh, anyway uh, so there we go so that's enough of my hints and tips um, so that's done right so let's have a look at what we've got in here Let's have a look at what we've got in this box. You can see this box is slightly smaller. So in here we have parts three, four and five. And as you can see, we've got more freebies. So part one was paid, part two was free, and then parts three, four or five are paid, but they've come with freebies. So um, this is part five. We can see on here FM005. And this looks like it's part of the seat. So we've got a soft We've got a soft vinyl seat, we've got some screws in there, we've got some chrome framing and a sponge. So it's actually built up like a real seat by the look of it. We've got a chrome insert for the centre of the seat there. We've got here an inlet manifold with some plates on the side. And it looks like we've got some valve gear to go on there. We've got rockers and a rocker shaft. Um, and we've got rocker covers. So in America, of course, they don't call these. These are called valve covers. In England, they're called rocker covers. In America, a rocker cover is what we call in England a sill. So and we've got some screws in there as well. No doubt some spares. So inlet manifold, valve gear and uh, valve, valve covers. So that's cool. And then what's in this one here? Oh, we've got a door. So we've got a massive, nice, glossy green door. You can see my camera and everything there and my face, in fact. <laughs> um, and then we've got a mirror by the look of it. Yes, we have a mirror, a door handle, um, a spring and some... I'm not sure what that is. Maybe it's got working door handles. We shall see. But uh, it looks very nice. Um, I've got the Shelby stripe along the bottom as well. So that's all cool. And that plastic is slightly split, so hopefully nothing's damaged inside there. But, uh, there we go. The packaging, I must say, is very good. Um, it, uh, you know, they, they, if, they, if they put these stuff in bags, then it would obviously get damaged. So I think this is what we're getting free with parts three, four and five. And this is, these are three posters. We'll have a look at them in a minute. And then, of course, we've got our three magazines, three, four and five. With three lovely images of the model on the front. So without further ado, let's have a look at these posters. And then we can crack on with the, with the build. So what have we got in here? We have a bag. Um, I'm going to cut one end of the bag open very carefully so as not to damage the the goods inside. So here we go. And it says three posters, Ford Mustang, 2203 CMC 206. So there's a lovely piece of flat black paper there. That's really nice. So here we have three posters. So I had to stop the camera. I just was trying to get the empty box. So um, yeah, we've got three posters here, and as you can see, they've had to curl them up in the box. So my advice here is put them, put them face down, and then just curl them back the other way without putting any creases in there, and it should lay flat. Just perhaps roll it around your arm or something, and it will lay much flatter then. So there we go. So that really is beautiful. Ford Mustang GT500. Eleanor, and this is um, Jarlat Maliatek from Shutterstock.com. So you can see on there is a beautiful picture of the sunset in the background, a little wind turbines, and uh, yeah, very nice, very nice indeed. Of course, they do uh, an Eleanor, don't they, in um, 1 8 scale. Here's the GT500 that we're building right now. So this is uh, 1967 Diagostini. Altea Collectibles. So there's the uh, that's the actual model we're be we're building right now. And then here's another picture. This time a real GT500, and again a lovely shot with a grey sky in the back or grey background. I'm not sure if it's sky or what it is, or if it's, it's probably a wall, isn't it? And grey tarmac. That looks black and white to me. It probably is. So. Uh, it's either a grey GT500, which I don't think existed, or it's a black and white photo. I think it's probably a black and white photo, but that is very, very nice. So thank you very much to Agostini for the little freebie. They are lovely. So, um, whoops. 
plastic model parts falling in on the game there. So there we are. Lovely. Um, right, here we have part three then of the build. This is the magazine that comes with it. So as usual, I'll have a look through the magazine first. So we've got some bits and pieces here about laws and United Kingdom, USA, Deutschland. Something that was interesting, people from the USA have been asking me when this is going to be uh, released. Um, basically, it's going to be released in the USA next year, apparently. So um, that should keep some of you happy. Um, so here we've got, in today's uh, magazine, we've got the Shelby's Racing de debut. And we can see him here in an Austin Healy on the uh, Salt Flats at Bonneville in Utah. So um, there we go. Here he is again. This is the first race he won in his MGTC. So you can see he's got a, an obvious liking for uh, British cars. Here he is here in his chicken farming uh, overalls. He was a chicken farmer and a racing driver. And uh, apparently he turned up for a race in his chicken, <laughs> his chicken farming overalls. And they apparently became a part of his symbol sort of thing. So here we are into the instructions for the uh, for the step by step build. They're calling it engine block and valve covers. It's not really engine block. It's inlet manifold and valve covers but they've got these flanges here which would be the top of the cylinder head um, in, in real life that inlet manifold would be a separate part but we'll have a look at that in a minute uh, and then at the back of the magazine we're talking about the uh, the Ford GT 2017 which absolutely gorgeous stunning car won Le Mans and everything um, announced at the 2015 Detroit Motor Show and it was unbelievably gorgeous um, of course, the V8 was gone. It was fitted with a V6, and they made a special series, uh, the 66 Heritage Edition, and it was done in shadow black with the white stripes going over the top with the gold wheels or bronze wheels, whatever they are. But um, yeah, very, very beautiful car, very limited and very much sought after. Uh, you can see a picture of the rear end there, and you can see how the body's all cut away for aerodynamics for the air to come through. You can see the air goes through there. It's a um, gorgeous, gorgeous car. Very, very low um, height adjustable suspension and everything. And here we have um, here we have the three. We have the Ford GT, the Ford GT, sorry, the Ford GT40, the Ford GT, and then the Ford GT 2017. So, um, yeah, you can see the resemblance. It's like you can hardly tell the difference between them. Um, but, yeah, it says here, they, um, they announced the car, they didn't announce the price or anything. 6,605 people put their name down and then Ford went down and asked you, they asked a load of questions about what other cars they owned, what their background was, what their history was and this and that and the other. And then they chose a thousand lucky customers to, who could get one. Um, and they also had to sign a contract to say they wouldn't sell the car. I think it was in a year or something, which was, I think, a fantastic idea. I wish Porsche would do it because, you know, Porsche GT3s, they, they, everybody and his dog has one on YouTube to do a review. They, there's about 20 available in the country, it's more than that. But And then people buy them and then after they, they've thrashed them around a the track for six months, they sell them for twice what they paid for them. And I really wish Porsche would do something about it because it's, it's very annoying. So there we go. So that's part three. So let's have a look at the build. Um, Okay, so we'll come over there. I'm sorry if this got this video seems a little bit uh, edited, guys. It's because I've got a stinking cold and I have to keep stopping to cough. So um, I've had this for about a week now, but last week I had an absolutely stinking cold and there's no way I could have made a video that uh, you would have enjoyed. So cut that packaging open so we can get that out, throw that away. We can turn this over and get the inner plastic out. There we go, that's the tray there. So first of all, we're gonna check our parts. So we've got 3A, yes, we've got that. 3D and 3B, yes, we've got those. 3C and 3E, yes, we've got those. And then we should have one, two, three, four, five screws. So just get my tweezers, get that little bag out of there. And we've got one, two, three, four, five screws, no extras. Hmm, hmm, they're getting tight in their old age, are they? <laughs> right, so, um. We'll cut that bag of screws open. We can get rid of that bit of plastic there. And then we can have those, put those in there, loose for safekeeping. Okay, so it's telling us, first of all, take the engine block 3A, which is this part here. 
just give it a quick check over make sure it's got no silly sharp edges sticking out or anything or anything that's going to prevent it going together I can't see anything if I do see anything I will file it and I will show you and I will tell you because if I've got the problem on here you may well have the problem on yours um, take the engine block 3A and place the right valve cover gasket 3E in position on the right side of the block the right side of the block and the valve cover gasket are marked with an R Fit the two pins of the right valve cover gasket into the small holes in the block as shown in the picture. So this is marked with an R, so that's R. Okay, and then we're going to grab these out. And that one's marked with an R, so we've got the right one first time. And this is going to go on. You can see we've got a radius edge here and a sharp edge there. So the sharp edge is going to go inwards, so that's going to go down like that. Okay, so that's on there. It's not a particularly tight fit. It will just come back off, but it's sat there. And then we're going to take the right hand valve cover, uh, which is 3D over the right gasket 3E on the block 3A. The right cover chair is marked with an R. So let's have a look. Gonna... Okay, so we're having a look under here. I'm looking for where the R is. It's telling me it's marked with an R. Yeah, there it is. It's inside there. You can just make out there, just above my finger, there's an R. So we've got the right one first time again. So that one is going to go on that way. So you've got these, obviously the Cobra is going to read correctly when you're standing next to the engine. So that is just going to drop onto there. Okay, so you can see then that we've got that. This engine's going to be huge. Um, turn the assembly upside down. This is where our cloth comes in. Where have I put it? Where have I put my cloth? Here it is. It's over here under a load of stuff. So I'm just going to put this down on here. I'm going to get my cloth. Get it put down on the bench. And then we can get this assembly. Put it together. Just like so. And then we can put that down upside down on the bench and it stays in place. Turn the assembly over on the inside of the block, secure the right valve cover with two of the screws. So we've got two of those screws. Uh, I'm seeing this now, we're only going to use four. <laughs> so they give us five, but we're only going to use four. So I've got my magnetic screwdriver. And I'm going to put that screw into that hole there and just start it. And just have it loosely in there. I'm not tightening it at all, and I'll show you why now. And then the same over here into this hole. Okay, so I'm putting that screw into there. I'm just looking there, you can see I've made the mis a very common mistake there. I've got the screw on an angle. So I'm going to put the screw in straight now. Okay. Now, as you can see, this has some movement in it. So what I'm going to do is push it in. Okay, you can see these, these holes are slotted so we can slide it in and out. So what I'm going to do is push it in as far as it will go. And then I'm just going to knit these screws up and then when we come to fit this to the engine, when we've got the rest of the engine, we can see how it looks. So if obviously the engine block goes on here and it's all sticking out, then we can slide them out. But that's still not tight. Okay, there we go. You can see we've got a nice straight line along there. If it's all on the angle, just, just move it around until it looks good. So then we're going to repeat the same on the left-hand side. We're going to take this, this set of valve gear here. Okay, put that on there. We're going to get this valve cover out. We're going to make sure it goes on the right way around with the, the, re the writing reading outwards. So that's going to go on there. We can turn it over onto our nice soft mat. 
and then pick up a screw and then start the screw. I'm sorry, I know you can't see what I'm doing guys, my hands are in the way. There you can, you can see the screw going in. And just make sure you don't make the daft mistake that I just made and get the screw on an angle. If anything goes tight, stop. That's what happened there. The screw went tight and I thought something doesn't feel right. So that's what you do. If something doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. There we go. So pushing that down. It's kind of looking like when you tighten these screws, it pulls it into the right position because even though that other one I pushed in as far as it would go, it appears that it's pulled it out as I've tightened it up. And you can see once again, we've got a nice parallel line there. So that's looking, look at the size of that. I mean, I haven't got particularly small hands, but that is just to give you an idea of how big this thing is. That is 110 millimeters wide, so that's over four inches wide. So uh, yeah, we've got a big old V8 there. And then going over the page, it's just telling us to put those screws in like I've just done. And that's what the engine block, look, we're calling it the engine block. Here it is there. And they're saying, that's what it looks like when it's all put together. And guess where it goes there, look. <laughs> So there we are, so that's lovely. So that's been part three. Right, so now we have part four. This is probably gonna be the longest, most involved and most enjoyable part of the build so far. So let's have a look at the cloth in there in the picture. Uh, let's have a look in the magazine. So here we are, we've got the Mustang Boss 351 and this was, <laughs> Um, known as the bread van because compared to other mug stands it was very very slab slab sided and it was huge um, it just looked huge of course this was the one they used in the first Gone in 60 Seconds film and it was yellow and uh, yeah beautiful beautiful car now but at the time I think everybody thought you know what have they done but then what became what followed that was uh, was not the best was it um, so here we can see it's a, it's a beautiful looking car, it's got the, a striking profile, we've got all the black stripes and everything, we've got the same wheels as we've got on this one, um, <clears throat> and here you can see we've got the smoother centre hubcaps on that one, um, but yeah it looks a lot different in that angle than it does in that one, that almost looks like a, a 1970 and this is a 71, but um, the 69 and 70 were very similar and then 71 had a completely different shape, so here's the instructions we're going to be working as I say this is looks quite involved and quite technical so we'll go along with this one so 1968 change of foe for Le Mans um, Ferrari gave up <laughs> they got beaten by Ford in 66 and 67 so they gave up and then it was all out down to Porsche to beat the GT40s and um, here you can see Pedro Rodriguez and Lucien Bianchi at the wheel led the race despite Porsche's dominance in practice so uh, Ford came back and then here we've got the um, the, uh, in the in the 24 hours of the mall, Joe Stiffer and Hans Hermann's Porsche, the pole position starter and the other official Porsches. So he was a great loser. So that I think that's a 910, isn't it? I think. Um, and then you got Lucien Bianchi makes a, a technical stop at night. The delay until September in holding the race meant having to race more hours in the dark than in the daylight. I didn't realise they did that. So uh, there we go. You can see those great big wide sills, kind of the GT40 with there with their fuel tanks in. There's lots and lots of technical information in here. Um, and you can say Pedro Rodriguez and Lucien Bianchi celebrate victory on the podium after winning the 1968 24 Hours of Le Mans. And then here we've got Henry Puscarola at the wheel of the Matra MS630. Gave a spectacular show during the night, but unfortunately it was unsuccessful. And uh, Puscarola, he was one of my favourite drivers of old. So very, very nice indeed. Lots of information there about the other cars and drivers that were there as well. So that's our part four magazine. So let's go back to the instructions for our left door. And as usual, first thing we're gonna do, check the contents. So I'm gonna also make sure that if I cut down there, I'm not gonna damage anything. It's safer to cut across this way. So 
and the safest way to do it and then just rip that off like that there we go. whoops throwing it across the room so once again turn the box upside down get the parts out and there we are i think in future videos i might get the stuff out of the boxes before i uh, before i proceed so as i say we'll do a quick parts check first we've got the actual door itself and we've got this little bracket here which is 4d this little bracket here which is 4e we have a spring yes uh, 4g there's a little chrome bit there not sure what that is we've got the door handle we got 4i which is the mirror stalk the mirror itself we have the mirror glazing so it's got a cover on it and then there's three ps09s let's get our screws out okay so there's three ps ps09s there's one two three four five six ds13 sorry i'm off camera there and then there's two of these tiny little PS12s. So we got those. So we've got everything. There's that plastic piece there, 4B, and that piece there, 4C. So we have got everything. And remember, it says the appearance of the items presented here may be slightly different from the parts supplied with this issue. So that's just covering themselves. They may use grey plastic instead of black or something, but uh, I can assure you the door will look like the door. Um, so the first thing we'll do is get all this out of the packaging. So that door weighs a ton, and as you can see, the paintwork is, is lovely on it. It's very, very nice indeed. There's no specks of dust in it, nothing at all. So yeah, very nice indeed. So I'm going to get this out of here. I'm going to put this down on the instructions there so as not to damage it. And I'm going to move that cylinder head assembly, or rocker cover, or valve cover assembly, I'm going to get this into the frame so you can see more of what we're doing. So, um, step one, place the lock cylinder 4G in the lowest of the three holes. I'm going to get my cloth and put my cloth down. I'm a bit stuck for space here. Instructions are too big, that's what it is. Place the lock cylinder 4G in the lowest of the three holes on the outside of the door as shown in the picture. Insert it all the way in. Turn the door around and from the inside secure the cylinder with a PS12 screw. So what they're telling us to do here is fit this piece here 4G, which is this tiny bit of chrome. And we're going to put that in there and then secure it with a screw called PS12. So I'm going to get my tweezers. Here's the lock cylinder. It's that tiny little piece of plastic. And that is going to go in. So that hole there, and as you can see, it's got it's got two flats on it, but it's been made off centre, so it will only go in one way, which is cool. And I don't want to handle it with tweezers in case I scratch the chrome. So that's basically where the key goes, if you like. And then it's telling us to use a PS12 screw. So I'm going to open this packet. Pour those out into there, because we can get rid of that bag. I'm going to use a PS12 screw. Now this screwdriver may be too big for this screw. Nope, it's lovely. Right, so I'm going to put my finger on the back of that screw, on the back of that lock there, and then just go in. In fact, I'm going to turn the light on, because I have the light off for the magazine. Sorry guys, and then I'm going to Come in from the back with that screw. Make sure it goes in nice and straight. And because it's got the flats on, I'm going to use the Diagostini screwdriver. I think it's going to be better for this tiny screw. Just nip that down. There we go. So that's that in. Okay, so there you are, there's your little lock in there. So we've dealt with that as step one. Step four, two, they're telling us to do the, the mirror. So we're going to put the door to one side. So we're going to grab the mirror stalk and the mirror itself. So we can use a small screwdriver to get this out of the packet. I don't want to go grabbing it with tweezers because we don't want to scratch it. It's very nice chrome plating on there. 
So next position the left side mirror arm 4i marked with an L on the back of the left side mirror holder 4j. The tab on the arm should fit in the notch in the holder ensuring that the mounting orientation is correct. So we've got a tab on here, we've got tabs on there, so that is going to make sure the orientation is correct. But it will fit that way, it won't fit that way. So that's good. So that's gone like that. And then they're telling us using a PS09 screw. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice and my cough and everything, guys. It's awful. Hopefully by the time the next edition turns up, it will all be gone. So we can stick a PS09 screw on our screwdriver there. Put this back together again. And then hold that together. And then from the inside... We're going to screw this together, just like so. There we go. Don't over tighten it because you'll start splitting plastic and stuff. So there we go. So that's gone in like that. And then now press the rear view mirror 4K marked on the back with an L into position on the left side mirror holder. Two pins on the left side mirror holder fit in sockets on the rear view mirror. It is recommended that you do not remove the plastic protector from the rear view mirror to prevent possible scratches during assembly. So it does have protective film on it. Okay, so you can see on there it's got the protective film. It's a very nice mirror indeed. So we're going to leave that on there. I'm not even going to take it off at all today. And that's just going to basically go in there and just push in. And that's that. That's in there, job done. And as I say, we can leave the plastic on there because why take it off? It might get scratched. So we just leave it on there. Now resume working on the door. Okay, so we're going to put that mirror to one side over there. We've got these two screws here I'm going to put in there. We've still got those screws there to use. So now resume working on the door and place the door handle 4 h in position on the upper right side of the door as shown in the picture. <clears throat> to ensure the correct orientation of the handle, the handle has a thin pin and a thick pin which fit into corresponding holes in the door. Put the handle in place, turn the door upside down and fix the handle in position from inside using a PS09 screw. So get a PS09 screw here, get that on the screwdriver ready, okay. We'll grab our door handle, I'm going to pick it up by the pin with the tweezers. mold seam on there which we could sand out and then re-chrome but we don't have re-chroming capabilities so that's fine so that's going to go like that that's going to go like that okay so it's pretty obvious which way around the door goes the door handle goes so there we are so we're putting that on and then we're going to turn it over all right and i've got this pso9 screw is going to go in there and that's going to hold that door handle in Again, it needs to be firm enough that the handle isn't wobbly, but you don't want to go over tightening it because you might split the plastic. So there we go. So that's gone in there. So now we can go over the page. Position the left side mirror arm in the left slot at the top of the door. Orient the arm so that once in place, the rear view mirror faces the door handle. So we're going to drop that into there like that, okay, and then we're going to turn the door over and secure from the inside using two DS13 screws. So these are our DS13 screws. So these are little chamfered ones. And there's one that came out and fell onto the screwdriver straight away, like it wanted to be the one. Why they've used countersunk screws here to be very careful here not to sp split the plastic open and also make sure the screws are nice and straight 
now you can see why we have the microfiber towel. So I've got one screw in. Just like so. I see the counter sinking, what it's doing, it's pulling it into position and it will also stop it wobbling about, he says, as he wobbles it about. Okay, I'm, I'm being very over cautious here, guys. What I don't want to do is break anything. It's good that the screws are tight on the threads because that means they won't come loose. The bad side to that is you can't really feel what you're doing. There we go. So you've seen me do that. You've seen how careful I was and there you go. That mirror is nice and firm now and I know there's no real stress there. I'm not I haven't grunched anything down. So that's that. Okay, so next place, oh, here we go. <laughs> this is going to be tricky, I think. Next place, the inner door lock flange 4D on the two protrusions on the inside of the door 4A. Note the flange is isometrical and the two ends are different heights. Position it so that it lies flat on the inside of the door. Attach the flange to the door with two DS13 screws. So these are our DS13 screws again. So we've got two of those there. We'll get one on the screwdriver ready. Okay, and then it's this bracket here we need. So we can pick this up because it's just black plastic. Notice it's not just flat. It's higher on one side than the other. So we can turn this over. And this is actually going to sit. You can see on there, it's going to sit on here. You can see that here, that side is lower than that side. So obviously we need to make sure this is the right way round. Because if I try and put it on the wrong way round, it just looks awkward. It's not sitting right at all. You can see on there, it's not sitting right at all. So we're going to turn it over. And a presto, it fits on there beautifully. Whoops, and then it falls off because I tipped it over. So I'm going to put this down here. I would suggest actually... Um, I think I, if, you, if I did want to do the other side, I will fit the mirror after I've done this because if I push down on this door, I may well break that mirror off. So I would suggest Diagostini change that build sequence. There's no reason why you can't put the mirror on last. So I'm going to put this screw into here. Just get it started. And then we're going to get this one into here. Just get it started. Then we'll nip these down until the plastic is nice and tight. Right. Okay, so that's that done. Place the door release button 4C in the slot on the inside of the door as shown in the picture. Insert it as far as it will go. 4C is... Or see is that part there so I'm going to pick that up Oops, sorry I nudged the camera then so I don't even know which way around this goes okay it goes that way around so that's going to go in that way around so that is going to be like our door handle plunger so we're going to push that in so we're going to push that in to open the door okay so that's gone in like that Insert the long end of the lock bar 4B into the door mechanism spring 4F. So we're going to grab the spring and we're going to grab the lock bar. That's steel by the feel of it. So that's going to go in there. Now insert the end of the lock bar 4B with the spring on it into the inner lock flange 4D. The short end of the bar fits into a notch in the side of the door. Position the opening mechanism 4E with its embracing 
embracing the short end of the bar as shown in the top right circular picture, fasten the mechanism to the door with a DS13 screw. So we're going to need this piece here as well by the look of it. So that is going to go that is going to go into there with the spring between it and then this this little cam piece here is going to go into that slot like so okay so then when we push the door handle it's going to pull it back now it's telling us now to fit 4e which is this part here yeah that just wants to spring apart so this is going to be quite awkward I think but this is what makes modeling fun when you have stuff like this if it all just falls together it sort of takes the fun out so what I'm going to do is hold this door with my thumb and forefinger there and I'm going to put my forefinger on there sorry thumb and middle finger holding the door keep my forefinger on there and then I can place this in position and this is actually going like that okay so this goes over the all right there's a tag there see I'm pointing at that tag there that's going to go down in a slot above the metal bar into there I realize this is probably a bit difficult for you to see because it's all just one big blob of dark green and black so I'm going to get a DS3 screw I don't want to let any of this go because if I do it will fall apart I should have done this beforehand so we keep some pressure on there and then pick this screw up put that screw in that oh come on Right, and then drop that in there, get it lined up, oh it doesn't spring apart, that piece holds it together, so now we can just put that screw in there, test our mechanism you can see when we push that in it moves that plunger so it should open the door very good right um, this is what the left door looks like once the handle is fitted so there we are all done very nice indeed so that has been part four just before we depart from part four guys I would seriously recommend get yourself a soft cloth like this a flannel or anything like soft like this and wrap this door up because believe me if you put this in a box with the rest of your bits and somebody picks the box up and turns it on end of something and that slides and it hits into something else it's going to scratch break whatever so do that keep it to one side unfortunately it won't fit back in the box because of the mirror what you could do is cut a slot out for the mirror to go into but you know what's the point is you can have a sharp edge against the door then so we'll just leave it like that okay so we've got part five um so this is where we're going to do the seat assembly but we'll look at the magazine first and here we've got shelby and the snake we've all heard of the shelby super snake and the cobra and all the all that sort of stuff so this is going to tell you the story about how it became about and um, here he is with Don Prudholm um, on their dragster. So you can see that, you can read all about that. And then here you can see Don Prudholm again with the, uh, with the dragster they built. Um, and then it talks about all the history and how they got together and everything. And then in 2007, Shelby America and Don collab collaborated to develop and launch a limited edition version of the Ford Mustang, the Prudhomme edition GT500 Super Snake. Uh, this tribute to the successful relationship to the two drivers in the 60s 
was powered by a supercharged 5.4 litre engine that developed 800 horsepower on race fuel and 750 on road fuel. We actually had a couple in the UK. Um, I've seen them. I've sat in one. They are gorgeous. Uh, the supercharger is, I forget the make of it now, but the uh, it's one of the less common superchargers. But they were absolutely beautiful. I believe there was also a 1967 Super Snake. I'm sure there was. Here we've got the uh, the seat going together. This will be a bit simpler than the last bit we did. And then the final part of the magazine, Ford GT, the birth of a legend. It surely was. Um, so this this was the uh, when they came out in 66 um, and, and just thrashed everybody. And they were absolutely amazing. Um, really, really beautiful cars. You can see here. There was lots of different variations on the same sort of centre tub um, and they also they also changed the centre tub as well uh, because they were built by um, they were built in the UK initially and, and built by Lola so uh, there you go you can see one going into it in the back of an aircraft there Eric Broadley owner of Lola was commissioned to build the car in his workshops Lund trusted him because his previous work on mid-engine vehicles yeah if you look at a like a 66 uh, GT40 compared to a 68 GT40. There's a lot of difference. Lots of difference. Um, and here we've got the, uh, this is a, a, one of the prototype cars from 1964. You can see on there the very strange looking nose. Again, you can see the strange looking nose here. Um, and that, yeah, they, they competed in 64 but dropped out in lap 58. So they didn't do very well. But by the time they got to 66, they'd... Uh, They'd conquered all the problems. So, part five. Um, let's get the light back on. Part five is all about the seat. So, if I can get to here. Left front seat backrest is all about the left today, isn't it? So, we've got the bag of bits here. So, I can just get my knife and just come across the top of here. Just like so. There we are. And we can get this packet out of here. So, we've got a sponge. And we've got our actual seat itself. And there's some screws in there. And there we are. There's nothing in that cardboard, is there? No. So we get that out of the way. So we can check all our parts. We've got that one there. We've got that one there. We've got this one here. And we've got that little piece of chrome there, which doesn't want to come out. And then we've got some screws down here. So we've got that laid out the same as the magazine. Let's get that door out of the way. So now we can see what it is we're doing. So get ready the left front seat backrest frame 5A and the left front seat backrest 5B. So I'm getting them ready. They're ready. Oh, okay, we've got to move on, have we? Right, okay. Um, so fit the back seat rest frame 5A into the inside of the seat backrest as shown in the picture. Note that the frame must be fully inserted into the backrest under the backrest outer edge so there's an outer edge on here so this is going to clip into here just like so and there's an edge oh that's really easy it's much easier than fit those inserts into those tires i can assure you so that's the that's stiffening them up the outside now insert the front seat backrest center trim 5e into the groove with rounded ends located in the seat backrest 5b fit the narrow part of the trim into the groove from the rear of the backrest so the narrow end can be seen in the front of the backrest as shown in the lower of the two circular images so i think it's quite obvious how this goes you've got a narrower piece and like don't put it in that way it goes in that way okay so you're going to push that into there so that's your chrome trim there in the back of your seat. Doesn't that look lovely? That does look very nice, doesn't it? Right, so that's there and there. Next, place the left seat front backrest trim on the back of the seat back. Identify the four attachment points indicated in the picture and put the trim into position, seating it fully before securing it with four PS14 screws. So we're going to make sure we've got the right way round first of all. So we can see these curves are going round and facing forward. So that is going to go onto there like that. So if the screws go in, everything is lined up, I assume. So we'll cut our bag of screws open. And then we can grab some screws. So we've got four of these. 
So we'll hold this together. Obviously I don't need a cloth here because I'm not worried about anything getting... We've got no shiny paintwork or anything to bother about. So that one's gone in there loosely. That one's gone in there loosely. If you notice I always put screws in loose and don't tighten anything until you've got all the screws in. And that way you won't cause any damage or pull anything over or strip any threads or anything like that. There we go. Again, you're screwing into plastic now, so be a little bit more careful. Just go until the screw stops and then that's tight enough. It's not really doing anything. It's not like the door handle or the mirror, you know, where it's holding something in place that's hanging off the side of the car. This is just literally the seat backrest. really funny actually I must say it's I sort of do the screws until they stop but there's there's still more to go it kind of feels like it's going to strip them out there we go so that's that we've got another spare screw there so that's that. So we've secured it with the four PS14 screws. So that's all good. And now we've got to fit, finally place the front seat backrest padding into the position on the rear of the backrest. Note the padding has an oval shaped recess that should lie over the back of the backrest centre trim. Note the padding is left loose for now and will be attached at a later stage of assembly. So that's going to sit, that hasn't gone in properly. So that is going to go in like that. And it's just going to fall off as soon as you turn it over. So again, we've got to wait until a later, later stage to actually fix that in place. So um, what we can do is get a bit of tape and tape it in. We could put a little bit of double-sided tape in there to hold it in, um, but we could just leave it like that. It'd be absolutely fine. So there we go. That's our seat backrest, and doesn't it look lovely? It does look very, very nice indeed. So uh, there we are. So that's been it. That's part five done. Part three, four, and five done in this video. So we've done our valve covers, our seat, and our beautiful little door as you can see there so there we are guys so I hope you've enjoyed that any comments questions whatever stick them down below if you want to have a look at getting one of these for yourself and building it along there's a link in the description below the video if you click on that that will take you to the D'Agostini and you can look at how you can order one for yourself and I think it also shows them how much traffic they get from my videos. So if you wouldn't be so if you'd be so kind as to click on that link and just have a look, then uh, then they will um no doubt be very happy with me indeed. <laughs> so thank you for watching guys and I'll see you all soon. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe down there and um, give us a thumbs up if you've liked the video, give us a thumbs down if you haven't, it all helps. And um, yeah and if you want to hear about more videos coming then hit the notifications bell and hit all. See you all soon. Thank you for watching. Uh, I guess we'll be back with this in around about four weeks time. So I'll see you then. Bye for now.